The Battle of Austerlitz, perhaps Napoleon's greatest victory, his finest hour, where he shows off his military prowess to the world. And here we are recreating it today. So yes, I'm here with seven other players uh, from uh, Kingston's Discord. Uh, luckily allowed me to uh, join his, uh, his stream and while they were recreating it. And I thought I'd show it off to you guys so you didn't miss out. But yeah, so we are here in 1805 with the Battle of Austerlitz. I'm here playing as uh, Books Hoveden. have definitely books Halvden, I think it's called I'm definitely butchering his name but uh, I do that anyway uh, when it comes to NTW3 but any I hope you guys are enjoying um, seeing NTW3 content at the moment on the channel do remember to leave a like subscribe for new around here and a comment if you'd love to see some more and uh, yeah at this point um, I think all you missed was a little bit of like a cavalry skirmish there was barely any kills I think this was like as you see there's a few horses down here dead um, but yes, you can see the French are starting to appear out of the mist. We'll get that it's a bit smaller. But uh, yeah, they are starting to appear. You can, there's a bit of a cavalry fight all the way over here. Got some uh, Russian uh, cavalry over here. This looks like uh, some sort of life lifeguard unit. That seems to be uh, breaking a lot of uh, French cavalry. That has done really well. It's broken two. That's a trillion there. It's broken. And it's broken a cavalry unit. Um, so that's a pretty good uh, return there for that cavalry unit. And uh, yes, yeah, so that was well done. This is uh, Constantine over here. But uh, yes, it looks like uh, there's four Grand Armies against four uh, Russian slash Austrian armies. It's obviously like the coalition. So we've got Assault uh, over here. I know we have uh, uh, Lands there, the Brave of the Brave. We have uh, Beza Bezeris, or however you say his name. Uh, and then we have uh, Davu all the way over there. So yes, we're starting to see a little bit more action. You can see the... Uh, Russians here are trying to uh, sort of kite the enemy into an attack. You can see some nasty fire going off. This cavalry getting hit up pretty nastily. And then the, the guards here are uh, going to be a bit threatened. and going to be a bit outflanked. I mean, they're trying to get some shots off there. Some good shots from those um, light infantry. And there you go. In they go with a charge. They may route these dragoons. Yep, yeah, route these dragoons. That's a good, good uh, win. And then in come uh, some more, well, some more like light cavalry. So we've got some dragoons over here. These are my dragoons, I believe. Uh, so yeah, I was playing as like yeah, Bucks Hove, don't know, well, one of them anyway. I think there is actually two on the battlefield. Uh, but yeah, I was like going to deal with this uh, guard cavalry, or at least try and hit, deal with it. And then the last moment, I check, I think I turn and deal with this general because they send up their general here, which actually apparently was their best cavalry unit. It's like their best unit had the best stats, which is. A bit worrying for the battle, but uh, yes, so here we are going to re try and recreate history anyway as the Allies. We're going to try and beat Napoleon and uh, and try and do our best. You can see we've got my, uh, I've got my three-pounder here, my Austrian three-pounder firing off, trying to hit that uh, guard cavalry that's just right in front of me. That's his uh, Eugene uh, de, de Bouhain, however you say it. That Eugene there, he's uh, Napoleon Stepson, or I believe, so... Uh, He's uh, obviously going to be a prime target to take out. I want to kill him off. You can see the Russians are setting up here, getting ready for the French to arrive. This is going to be, uh, well, this is Salt's army over here. He's in the uh, in the real Battle of Austerlitz. He is the uh, the hero of the battle because he takes the Prats and Heights, which are uh, way over like here somewhere. Um, I believe they're like here. This is like the Prats and Heights apparently on this. Uh, oh, no, it might be about here. I think the Prats and Heights on this map. Um, so yeah, and the French are actually being uh, aggressive at this point. They've been quite aggressive. While in history they were obviously very defensive, um, kind of played it quite safe and let the more numerous allied army attack them. But obviously this is NTW3 and you're going to see some changes. And you can see that the um, our plan really was to be quite aggressive on this right hand side, trying to envelop uh, the French armies over here. While I just kind of just did a, a bit of a... Uh, like standing order and at this point I was just firing into my troops I didn't even realize yeah look at that I was not even paying attention just firing to my own troops what was I doing I think I was dealing with them um, like sending troops over here I think I was sending over some uh, some infantry this is my infantry actually uh, but I was de probably dealing with something else so just not paying attention probably just looking around the map at like what everyone else was doing um, but as you can see there is the Russians getting set up all the way over here and they're getting ready got more cavalry than the French actually here which is a, a bit worrying and you can see we are just using our guns we're just gonna fire on the French I think the French have um, smaller armies because obviously this guard army is just really small but it's really elite these guys are really really good um, well this isn't even the guard army I don't believe 
It's like over here. Here's the guards. There's the old guard here. But, uh, yeah, so obviously we have uh, a large army, but we're not going to uh, be aggressive because we know that the French have quality. You can see another gendarmes coming forward here. A little unit of gendarmes. You need to be careful with these uh, infantry here. Hopefully they're going to get some volleys off. They're going to hold. Need some volleys, men. There we go. Volley's going off. This one, you're going to fire. We had silent muskets there. I don't know why we had exactly silent muskets, but there you go. No, they're going to form square. There we go. We can hear the muskets going off now. They need to be careful they don't shoot in the back of their own comrades here. And they need to be careful they don't shoot these, their own cavalry. Uh, it's, it's a fine art. Fine art. Not shooting your own men. I've, I've not quite mastered it either. I think I stopped firing at this point, but I did kill a good 10 men of my own troops. And at this point, um, yeah, I'm starting to see French cavalry appearing on my flank. I have this art this huge artillery piece. Uh, well, it's not even that big. It's a six-pounder, but it's a, a good artillery position. I've got this nice hill. I can fire and just dominate this uh, this, uh, this line, basically. So I'm now having to tell my cavalry that was defending here to face it. I may also be turning my infantry soon uh, to help support that. And that then my gun can do some good, hopefully, and be safe. Over on this far flank, this is where the action looks like it's going to be taking place first. You can see more guns going off here. We've got more six-pounders going off. I think they're just raking fire onto this, uh, yeah, this uh, Chasseur unit. It's like Chevelle Americans. It's not made up of Americans, is it? We've not got some Americans here today, have we? I don't know. Maybe. But it's a Chasseur unit all the same. Kill it. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the French are still... Uh, they get, they're pushing up, and it looks like the Russians are ready to uh, receive... Uh, a, a bit of a beating here, and you can see the Trilliers are setting up very close. I don't know why this cavalry's not charging. This is like point blank range for this Trillier unit, right into the back of that cavalry. And this is a really beaten up uh, light infantry unit. You can definitely take this out. Here we go, the cavalry goes in. And in they go for the Trilliers, and they're going to be no more. And in come the uh, Chasseurs as well, they're going to come and turn in, and then you've got this unit of. Well, this unit of light infantry here just firing point blank. And that's just route. Oh, that's helped route the French and it's routed the Russians. These guys, I think, are going to try and form square. Yeah, but they're not going to do it in time. No, nope. maybe they can't form square. But, uh. There you go. They've been routed by the Russians. And the Russians have won that flank. Very nice little win there for them. You can see that the, uh. The uh, Russians and the Austrians are setting up all the way over here. We've got this uh, Grenzer infantry unit. It's a really huge unit, 178 men. Not very good, though. Uh, I can say not very good at all. Um, over on this side, as you can see, um, well, still pushing forward, really, the guard. Still pushing forward. We've got the French charging forward here, though. The French are sending some cavalry. I think they're trying to go after some weak units, maybe some artillery. I don't really know what they were going for there. There's just a lot of infantry. It's had a tiny little unit in there of uh, dragoons to try and just take out all this infantry. And this is some good infantry. This is the Musketeers Moskva. These guys are the, uh, like the best infantry we can bring. Um, bar Grenadiers. You see there's a lot of French troops stacking up on this side. And, uh, yeah, this is a concern. Over on here, you can see the French now being more and more aggressive here. This is, um, my ally on my right-hand side just getting harassed by this, uh, guard cavalry. And in comes some light cavalry. And then in come my, uh, cuirassiers. They're trying to just rout. We're just going to mass rout this. But, yeah, we've got a uh, lifeguard, cuirass like, cuirassiers, and we've got some just, like, normal ones, I think. Yeah, you've got lifeguards here and then the Karassias. We just, like, not routed, but we scare it off. That's the main objective. And now we can fall back this unit. Yeah, I have a huge unit of cavalry, 145. I was very much wanting to use this to uh, some good effect. Now bring up some of my own infantry, bring up um, some of these um, Austrian units and some Russian units, and I'm going to try and uh, do my best to help in this formation. You can see the Austrians here. They've got, like, got some strange looking helmets. They kind of remind me of firefighters a bit. They're quite cool. Yeah, they're going to set up. They're not, like, very expensive, but apparently they're quite good. Um, and they're cheap anyway, so if they can just pin down much better units, that's fine. As you can see, we now have a brutal musket, uh, like, firefight going on here. Get a French perspective. Look at that French line, looking glorious. As it twitches as well. Yeah, they're just firing all the way across there. You can see the, you can see the Russians and the Austrians on the other side. This is a battle that is known as the Battle of the Three Emperors because in uh, history, obviously Napoleon was here. Then you also have uh, the uh, Francis uh, the First, I believe, is uh, the Austrian Emperor, and then you have obviously uh, Alexander as well. Alexander the First here was as well. I'm now trying to reset my infantry. I think I'm uh, trying to 
rejoin up with this uh, this units, uh, these units, so they don't get outflanked really, just so they kind of a bit more protection. Um, but uh, I'm having a bit of a rough time, so I'm trying to reset. Oh, this is not even me actually. This is aggregation. I'm all the way over here. I do apologise. Claiming units that are not a, not even mine. They look so similar. And over here we've got another cavalry fight going on. Uh, looks like we've got uh, some line infantry that have been caught out. And they're being attacked by some Chevaliers here of the Austrians. Doing their best. They've been routed. This cavalry could move on or it may retreat. Yeah, it's, I think it's... Oh no, it's going to go on. It's going to carry on. Probably the best decision. If they retreat, they may just get routed on the uh, by a ridge. Like a ridge volley or something like that. Whatever you call it. Got lifeguards here. This is the Imperial Guard of like Constantine. Look over their shoulders. They've got a hard fight ahead of them, I can tell you that. And then back, if we go back to the center quickly, then we uh, we can see that there's the cavalry here still doing trouble. We're trying to route this huge unit of cavalry. And uh, yeah, our crasses Glorious are back in here now, doing their best. They try to go after my infantry. Apparently Glorious Victory will soon be ours, but the battle's just about started. It's barely gone away, really. Uh, over on this side, I'm now having my guns charged. I did turn them in time, but I think they got like one or two shots off. My cavalry tried to stop them. But somehow some of the Dragoons get through. And I'm desperately bringing up infantry to try and now combat. Because this is a much larger force than I realized. It's the entirety of the Vu's core is all the way over here. Trying to take this hill from me. And uh, successfully at the moment. You can see that my uh, Dragoons have been routed here. They're not the most expensive Dragoons in the world. But they are Dragoons all the same. I mean, you want to keep them alive. Yeah, I'm now trying to set up... Uh, I'm going to try and set up at the bottom of this hill. Falling back my infantry. And uh, I'm going to, yeah, try and set up. I'm going to get some shots in the rear as I retreat. Back over on this side. It's all going off over here. It is really going off. Like, in comparison to my side, I was feeling like I had... This was, like, absolute mess over this side. I was having absolutely no fighting in comparison to this. They were fighting some huge armies. You see, routing uh, line infantry now for the Austrians. Well, the Russians have got cavalry in behind. Look at this. They've got some lifeguards all the way in behind here. This is bag, uh, this is Bagration's, uh, like, core here. I definitely get, like, told off, like, pronouncing uh, Bagration wrong. So I'm going to try and pronounce it right as much as possible now. Sometimes when you're heat in the heat of things, pronunciation goes out the window. You have to just appreciate. These, uh, Moscow... Line infantry doing their best. Look at that, li that like line of French over there. You can't even see it because the muskets, uh, the musket fire. There you go. They're desperately going off. And the French are actually flanking them here. They need to be careful. This the Russians. They might need to push up these uh, final few units here. They need to push these guys up and uh, do their bit. I mean, over here, what's this? This is some of my units. Yeah, they were trying to like. So I wasn't even paying attention. I thought all these guys were routed. And I think they did and then re-rallied. Um, but then I realized. And then I just formed square right at the last moment. And just saved these uh, guys from an untimely death. Hopefully they can route these guys. If we can get a volley off, they can route those guys. But uh, yeah, so they need to be careful because the guard is arriving. The guard is actually do dominating the center. Look at this unit here. Grenadiers um, of the like the Italian guard grenadiers. These guys are awesome. Um, but yeah, it's all going off, really. They look awesome. I don't really want to have a good look at these guys. They are really cool. Apparently, the guard uh, player could only bring seven units of infantry or something like that. Uh, even if he wanted to bring more, he couldn't. Uh, they just either were, like, there's that, it's limited to one per, like, one a unit. And they're also very expensive, apparently, so... Which is no surprise, they are the guard. You can see over on this side, causing a lot of problems here for the French. Um, this center for the French is looking very weak. The Russians, if they can break these last few units, can push forward, and then they can start to think about encircling some of these uh, other French units. There's a big, big Grenadier Cheval unit here that needs to be dealt with first. And this is coming to deal with some lifeguards. That is going to be an issue. And, uh, I mean, either side looks like they could win that there. I mean, obviously, the guard now arriving is also another uh, sort of element that's been thrown in. We've got, yeah, more of the grenadiers of the guard here. This is what, like, the proper old guard looks like. Look at them. Looking glorious. Artery fire going off in the background. And this is an interesting one. This is, um, Hippo Hippolyte Turlin. I'm pretty sure that's, like, a... Hippolyte is, like, a Greek goddess or something like that. Or something like that. I could be wrong. 
But anyway, we'll go back over and check my side. Over, it's not looking so great. I'm having a pretty rough time. I am trying to deal with these carry because I've run out of carry myself. I've had it uh, fighting off in the center mainly, and it's been do, uh, doing a, it was doing an okay job. My Karasias, but not like amazing. They kind of they got routed um, at this point. But yeah, I am trying to stand my ground. I'm just trying to hold on long enough for my allies to win my side. I'm desperately trying to get other like infantry units up. I'm bringing all my infantry back from the center. Now face here. And I think in a moment I'm about to, uh, I'm going to reform my lines. And you can see that I'm being charged with this Musketeer of Bible breaking to the Dragoons here. So yeah, I look at that. Two units breaking. And that, at that point I was like, right, that's it. A third breaks, a fourth. At this point I was like, right, it's time to go. Time to retreat. And these Dragoons, they break luckily. And now I can fall back. I've got Grenadiers on my right flank. So these guys can certainly hold for a long, long time. I still have a fair few Mus uh, Moscow Musketeers as well. So it'll be okay. A general has died. So uh, Frida's general has died. I believe that is, uh, that's Lanz here. Lanz has died. He went into combat against these Dragoons and did not come out alive. And you can see that the uh, the Russians are starting to win here. The Russians and Austrians starting to win. Starting to get the numbers. The whole like French center and uh, you could say is breaking. You could call this like the French right almost. Because well, honestly, my battle was a bit of a sideshow. Um... But yeah, you can see the guard are forcing back the Russians on this side, though. Bit of a pro there. You can see they're sending in Bezeris. This is the general here. He's still one of the strongest units in the game. Like, the strongest cavalry units in this battle, apparently, for the French. And here he goes. And he goes into those Moscow Musketeers. They can form square. They did it in time, but this one will. And I don't know whether they'll be able to shoot. Um, which they might do just about now. That might be dangerous for the, uh, for, the uh, for the officer, oh, for that general, sorry. Uh, my, yeah, my units are like fatigued at this point. Look at this. Uh, I've got a huge problem with uh, like units breaking. But uh, luckily, I think most of these are like Viborg or Briank's units. I'm glad that the Moscow units are back because they can form square, which is really useful. And uh, yeah, at this point, most of my units can form square. So this cavalry is becoming a bit redundant. But yeah, I've got my nice firing line here. See the uh, Austrian grenadiers in the foreground, and then you've got the uh, Russian grenadiers just after. And these guys will hold for a long, long time. And yeah, you can see the in the end, these guys are actually just charging, uh, breaking units, just trying to rack up their kills. Just fine. I'm just gonna like shoot them with my uh, infantry. I'm just trying to keep my uh, gun, my three pounder that I still have alive. Uh, I'm trying to keep that safe and healthy. And uh, yeah, so the I've got this Grenzer, you know, just defending the flank. If they try and come around, these guys have pretty good range. They're light infantry of Grenzers. Um, so uh, they could do a good volley. There goes the gun. That's just firing. I think I've just got that firing like into this huge blob up here. Maybe a, I think I have it firing at uh, Dabu actually. At this point, uh, just trying to hit him, kill him. And yeah, at this point, they actually give up. But they they're falling back. They're gonna fall back up the hill. Uh, are the French? I have uh, not routed Dabu, but I've scared him off. I've got a substantial line here which can hold. I was basically just trying to hold around this uh, this village. Wherever they came, if they attacked from like the front, I was going to hold this village. If they attacked from the side, like they have done, hold the village. Uh, and this was kind of my objective the entire way through. I've got just infantry here moving around, just trying to counter where this French cavalry is going. You can see, it looked like they were going to go in for a charge, and they thought better of it because I'm a uh, I'm limbering up my uh, artillery. I love horse artillery; it's so useful. And there, yeah, I've got this Grenz unit still defending. And this cavalry here, my general's really, really good. Over back on this far side, I've not been obviously paying attention to the, ba the big fight that's been going on, really. You can see that the uh, the French still uh, still trying. I mean, they've actually routed a lot of the Russians now. It's actually quite even. If the French could finish off this lot here, um, then they might have a chance. Um, but yeah, they have actually been forced back at the French here. The guard have been forced back. They're running into some significant problems. There's now a little flanking force here of the uh, musketeers of... Uh, of a uh, vagration here, and uh, you can see that um, they're having to turn around some shit to face that. But they can't cont continue this way. They're going to go into superior like artillery fire. They're going to go right onto these three pounders, and then um, also into this infantry. Yeah, this uh, is a solid line here. So uh, we'll definitely uh, we're definitely in a strong position now as the uh, coalition forces. You can see a volley. Excellent, excellent. And there you go. You can see there's a good fire line going on here. The French are a little bit in trouble. I don't know exactly what the French are doing at this point. Uh, I wasn't really paying attention. The forming column looks like they're going to try and just bayonet charge, possibly. Don't know, but they're about to get swamped on this uh, right hand side by lifeguard, which is uh, not a good sight to see Russian lifeguards appearing here, or Russian uh, guards just anyway appearing. 
Here we go. Let's have a volley from the guards. Yeah, that's going to be nice volleys into the, into the flanks of these French. Losing a few men, see a few dropping. Shooting a few Austrians as well, because why not? Who cares about the Austrians? And then in goes that lifeguard cavalry. Oh, this is a Krassi's in fact, sorry. Um, it's Krassi unit going in. A very, it's the same one as what I have, but it's, uh, we have a, so we have another books house and over here, you see. So uh, we, here's a twing, clearly. But yeah, at this point, I'm now actually retreating my army. Um, I'm giving up fighting this hill. It's uh, a tactical retreat. I could have probably beaten Davu on that hill, um, but we were deciding that we could just crush the uh, guard down the center. If I retreat uh, to the rest of the main army, then we cannot be beaten. Like, the guard, in theory, I think is marching over here to try and beat me, sandwich me with Davu. But um, if I can quickly march over here, try and engage the guard, which is a much smaller unit, or an army, sorry, um, and then these infantry here could push up, then we can squash the guard. And you can see, as you can see, this is the final hurrah of the French on this flank here. Grenadiers, the line, trying to stop Carassiers. I mean, they're not even in square, but they might be able to do it. Who knows? Who knows? There's so many bodies here. Looking absolutely brutal. And there you go, they're breaking. And it's just, uh, just Salt left. Salt is still alive over there. But yeah, you can see the guard. I think they're, they're really small units at this point. 109, 100. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're good sized units, but they're, they've been in battle. So they're pretty depleted at this point. And I've been rushing a lot of my units around, trying to counter stuff. You can see, I've just been having my horse artillery. Wherever this uh, cavalry goes, my horse artillery goes literally the opposite direction. I'm just having none of it. Um, this is literally the last cavalry unit for the French alive. And I was trying to just counter it in all possible ways. This Dragoons is not allowed to get the satisfaction of killing off my artillery. So, uh, yeah, I was just trying to set up stuff, try and counter it. I'm slowly marching towards the uh, the guard at this point. And I am always, as well, ever worried about uh, Davu in the back. So I have a large, a really large rear guard right now. Um, just to allow that. Um, for any sort of like problems with the view. I'm also just like terrible with micro in this game compar in comparison to like other ones. So I'm really slow in this comparison. But I'm moving up in column. I'm doing everything like you should be in NTW3. I'm trying to just help my teammates as best as possible. You, know, you can say I'm much more experienced NTW3 players. Um, but you can see the French are actually deciding that the guard, they're not going to try and um, like, I thought they were going to come and sandwich me. Um, they're actually just going to set up in this, uh, in this little uh, village here um, and try and hold here. They're going to try and uh, just hold on and hope that Davu can break through me and relieve them. But I might be asking a little bit too much of Davu. Put some Smolensk musketeers here. They've got a gun, a three pounder, literally. They could just put some holes into this farmhouse if they want to. And yeah, the Russian, like, beast is just finished over here, really. Like, the Russians and the uh, Russian Austrian armies. They're very much done. I don't even know what they're firing at now with their guns. Oh, they're firing at other guns. Okay. Yes, this is not, not like the worst thing in the world, but. I'm not going to hit anything. These French guns here. Eight pounders. Doing their best. I think they're just dueling with their artillery. So I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. Because this is where it kind of quiets down a little bit as we move up. Um, basically all you're like. Well you're not missing anything. It's just basically the cavalry coming back to rejoin Davu's army. Davu's army is about around here where this. Uh, yeah you can see here it's just about to take this village. Or like. Uh, claim the village and then uh, so yeah at this point I was like right let's make a decent rear guard let's just form up a line and uh, or I'm in a moment I think I'm about to decide in a moment yeah you can see the units starting to turn around I've got some Austrian uh, line infantry here that are going to do exactly that going to form this line just get ready for Davu when he eventually comes and the rest of this force here is just dedicated to finishing the guard um, so yeah that is the plan anyway you can see some Russian cavalry did they just break to this general they did so this is still Bezer uh, like Bezeris here or whatever however you say his name he's actually a really strong cavalry unit he's got uh, yeah he's got Grenadier Cheval I think it's like office unit he's poor yeah someone needs to call like Geneva Convention because like this poor Gre uh, Grenadier unit this uh, guard Italia just got like destroyed by canister shot here like that has got to be a war crime um, but I mean at least the uh like the general for the French is trying to deal with them, um, trying to deal with the uh, artillery, try and get some justice. But I'm going to set up some infantry here, and uh, yeah, I think that is actually going to scare him off. 
And, uh, yeah, I might be able to accidentally friendly fire this artillery. Yeah, I'm friendly firing that artillery crew. But that's what it gets for retreating. Uh, it's not very Russian. You can see that the uh, the general here, Salt, is actually going to go in. He's going to go in for my artillery. He managed to sneak through. I didn't even see him. I was so busy preoccupied with the Dragoons, trying to counter them. I didn't even see Salt come in. And, uh, yeah, in he goes. Just, one cavalry guy just dies instantly on the charge. Um, my general's now going in. And uh, hopefully can deal with these. This uh, artillery crew just needs to hold. And there you go. Salt has died in that combat there. I'm now slowly turning uh, like more infantry just to face this Dragoon. Try to defend the flank here. My artillery stands so it can survive. But it's got no horses. So it's not really a horse artillery. And then there goes another general. Oh, no. that's uh, That was Salt's just dying there. Uh, so Bezer I think Bezerius like, went off and died. I think he... Where did he die? I'm not actually quite sure where he died. Um, but he died somewhere. I think he died maybe attacking that other gun. Or did he die attacking this Strelke unit? Possibly that. I don't know. But uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. You can see the guard are now setting up in this village. They're uh, just going to mind their own business here. Love that officer unit. Look at that. With his little medal there. He's got his uh, fancy boots on. I really hope they make a Napoleon Total War 3. I mean, the graphics would be so good. And you can see now we have a, a line battle going on behind us. This is uh, kind of like when I take center stage, really, because I am the only one that has to fight a, and a French army left now. Um, so, yeah, I kind of take a bit more center stage because really everything that was going on, like all the chatting, like in the in the voice chat, was just basically all on that right flank. Just very much worried because that was where our plan was uh, kind of in place. That was where we were going to try and beat the French. And we beat the French there. Now I've just got to do my bit, beat the boo. And you can see my, uh, my infantry's doing okay, but not like a great job. Could do with uh, probably getting a little bit closer to benefit the uh, the Russians. Not got the greatest accuracy in the world in comparison to the French. But uh, I probably also don't need all of this infantry to deal with the guard, but you never know. Especially when there's a lot of infantry on the other side yet to still arrive. But it already committed, so I was like, right, it's going in this way. I have my uh, Moscow Musketeers here doing their bit. It's a nice line of infantry here. Oh, lovely. Glorious as always. Glorious smell, the smell of musket fire, gunpowder going off. If, if only you could smell it. Uh, Dragoons going in for an artillery piece all the way over here. They're just, I think this, yeah, it's, uh, I think this is a horse artillery piece, yeah. And it's going to get attacked. Oh, poor unit. It's a, it's a six-pounder as well. It's a good six-pounder. It's a guard. I think it's a guard artillery piece. And they're trying to limber up. Look how slow it's limbering. Like, no, quickly, man. We've got to uh, like get there. The Dragoons are coming. These guys are so tight. They're very tight. And their morale's already uh, like affected by that. And look, yeah, the Schomburg Dragoons charging in. Like, look how slow they're going now. And they eventually make it. And, uh, yeah, they, they charge in. They actually do a lot of damage to their own morale. I think I start to fire, like, a round of artillery over here. Yeah, look, I start firing artillery over here. Trying to support, try and scare the uh, Dragoons. Both shots miss. Uh, typical. Um, and now it's probably my artillery that's next. You can see I'm starting to flank the, uh, like, Dragoons army. I have more infantry. Yes, that's worse, but I'm willing to, like, flank and do some damage. You see, I have lost a lot of men, actually, in this musket fight. Like, um... Look at the bodies at the bottom of my uh, line. There's so many dead Russians. Like the French just outgun the Russians. But the Russians have such good numbers. But yeah, I'm trying to flank now. Um, and the French, I mean, they're losing a fair few men. Not too many. And now here come the Dragoons. Um, so at this point, I was like, quick, quick, quick. We need to load this gun. I'm loading up canister shot. And I'm going to try and uh, put some big old holes into this unit. There you go. So big holes into that Dragoon unit. And there you go, they break. And the gun survives. Finally, I deal with this Dragoon unit. It's been, like, harassing me all game. And, uh, yeah, finally dealt with it. So I was like, big sigh of relief. And now I don't have to worry about that. And we beat the uh, guard over here. Uh, we didn't really show it, but they kind of just got sandwiched between the two. Got charged by cavalry, I believe, as well. Uh, as you can see here. And they uh, stormed the building, I believe, as well. I don't know... I didn't realize we successfully stormed it so easily. Well, do they? I think they actually might have uh, come out of the building. Maybe one or the other. But yeah, now basically all of this Russian army. Look at the streams of Russians and Austrians. are now able to come and join uh, the battle over here against Davu. And they're going to actually bayonet charge me. 
So the French, yeah, they were just going to actually burn it, I mean, I was like, okay, we'll take this. This is a, a thing that I can do. I mean, my Austrians won't uh, do so well, but my, my Russians should do okay. My Russians should do okay in a, in a bayonet charge. And I am actually winning the flanks. And in go the Russians. Yeah, I won the flanks quite easily because I double teamed uh, most of the French units. Uh, the center kind of buckled a little, but we also buckled the French. There's only this one unit. Oh no, the uh, Davu's in here as well. Davu charged in on foot. He's in there somewhere. His fancy uniforms. But uh, yeah, at this point, we basically defeated the final French army. Uh, decided to... Uh, there you go, another general dead. Davu is fallen. And then all that's left is these guard units actually return. So he's just says, uh, just harassing the uh, the guard artillery. Or I don't know if this is guard artillery at all, actually. It might be. I'm not quite sure exactly. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. So now I'm just basically just going to... Uh, uh, fast forward and basically until we get to the end um, just, just watch this poor little chasseur unit well, we're, oh this is the uh, the one that I think is named after a Greek goddess but it could be wrong don't know what formation it's trying to form trying to form maybe some sort of column or is it going to form a square no it is just trying to form a sort of column but uh, I don't know but yeah there we go I'm basically just going to send up some, uh, some of my line infantry this unit barely seen any action 178 men Never actually got to use this gigantic unit of infantry. Um, and just, yeah, use it. So there we go. We got fire there. There we go. Nice boy. Oh my gosh. Artillery going off as well. Um, yeah. So there you go. If it wasn't going to be... If the line infantry unit wasn't enough, like, fire... Oh, this light infantry unit wasn't enough firing, then the guns did their bit. And the guns then... The gun crew got off their guns. They were going to charge the, uh, the guard. That's a bold play. But there you go. And then that final unit breaks for the guard. I think that's, uh, yeah, the other books I've done over there. Just charging in. And there you go. We have a victory. The coalition forces have defeated Napoleon at Auslitz. They have changed history. And what a, uh, a glorious battle it was. Um, yeah, it really was a really fun one to take part in. Um, I actually got the second most kills um, out of anyone in our army. Uh, like... Which is kind of surprising because I thought I was doing very little fighting. Um, Kingston getting the most kills, getting well over a thousand kills. So did really well, but he nearly brought over three thousand men. Like he actually like outnumbered two of the French armies alone. You could al almost say three of the French armies alone if you uh, use the two thousand, two thousand nine hundred, and that seven hundred. But yeah, seven hundred men. Polska here. I'm bringing seven hundred. Was the guard. So they were massively outnumbered the French. I mean, they were in history as well, massively outnumbered at Auslitz. If they possibly played a bit more defensive, may have been a bit better. Um, I'm not really sure. It's hard to say. But, uh, yeah, so thank you to, uh, Kingston, also Chainmail and, uh, Uxbridge for having me, like, on their side and, uh, uh, dealing with me. I was not, like, didn't do too awful, I felt, but, uh, yeah, it was a really fun one. Um, and, yeah, well done as well to Polska Frida's, uh, Fat Nose Midget and, uh, J Master. Uh, just, like, also, well, they did a good fight. They fought hard. Um, I mean, like, Fat Nose Midget, I'm not quite sure exactly which army he was playing. Oh, Salt. Uh, he got well over, he got the most kills of anyone in the uh, entire battle. So he did really well. Um, but yeah, we'll quickly have a look at some of the unit stats. Um, my Musketeers, Moscow, are getting the most kills, 148. Uh, my uh, Vyborg Musketeers, uh, like, was a more second-rate Musketeer unit, getting 137. Um, like, my Karassiers, I can't I can't remember there. My third, three pounder getting 36 kills. My uh, Karassiers are down here somewhere. They cost, like, a lot of money. Yeah, only getting 14 kills. Um, which is a real shame because they cost like 1400 so that's like a uh, thousand per kill they got there and uh, yeah like my six pound only getting like three kills I had it in such a nice position and I never really got to do anything um, which is a bit of a shame but yeah there you go there are my kills anyway if you want to have a look at them but yeah if you enjoyed the Battle of Auslitz then do remember to leave a like subscribe from your own here and leave a comment and don't forget to hit the bell if you'd like to see some more NTW3 action and so you don't miss out on the next one and until next time Legionnaires bye for now